In this video, I'm going to give you a demo of what it looks like to work with the new TK7 GO module. Now, if you're new to luminosity masking, it's important to understand that learning to use these kinds of masks and all the functions that the GO and rapid mask modules can do takes time. To progress with masking concepts and techniques, I recommend practicing a lot and working through the additional learning materials that you can find on Tony Kuiper's blog, as well as in my video courses and on my YouTube channel. Anytime I'm working in Photoshop and considering using luminosity masks or other types of advanced masks that the Go module and the rapid mask module can make, I go through a kind of mental checklist. So first I ask myself, do I want the adjustment to be targeted or global? If it's going to be global, meaning it's going to affect the entire image, then I don't need to use a layer mask at all. Second, if I do want a targeted adjustment and I want to target that adjustment to part of the image, does it need to be precise or can I just freehand paint a rough mask with a brush? Third, if I do need the mask to be precise, then does it need to be a hard edge mask or am I selecting a certain object that has defined edges? And if so, then probably using one of the selection tools is the best way to go. Fourth, if I need the mask to be precise, but I also want it to be feathered based on luminosity or color, then using the panel to create one of the advanced masks is the way to go. Five, I'm using the panel to look for a mask that is light in the areas that I want to adjust and dark in the areas that I don't want to adjust. With the Go module, the red overlay feature can help me visualize that. And finally, number six, it isn't particularly important how I get to my mask, so if I'm not sure where to start, it's okay to experiment with different sources and modifications until I get to a mask that I think will do the job I'm trying to do. So with those things in mind, let's take a look at making some adjustments to this image using the Go module. The first thing I want to do is darken some of the light tones. It just feels a little washed out to me, a little maybe even overexposed, but I don't want to block up my darks. So this is an adjustment that I want to feather through the light tones into the darker tones, but protect the dark tones. So there's no one object that I'm trying to select. So that's a perfect use for a luminosity mask. So I'm just going to start with the just standard luminosity mask. That's a lights one and that's probably pretty good, but let me look at a lights two. That's a little more targeted toward those light tones, but this might be a little too dark. So this is where I can use the modify section now to open up the lights a little bit, uh, sorry, the mid-tones, and then maybe, you know, yeah, open up the light a little bit too. I think that looks good. It's light in the areas that I want to darken. So let's go with that. And I'm going to use uh, a curves adjustment layer to output that mask to. So I'll click that button. And here's my curves adjustment layer with that mask. And with this button, I can view the mask. There it is. And now let's make an adjustment. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the curve down. And sure enough, it's darkening the uh, light areas because of the mask. And it's protecting the shadows. And it's over darkening into my foreground a bit. Now, before I start working on this image, I made several different selections that we saw in some of the other videos. I've got a selection or a mask for the sky. I've got a mask for the land. I've got a mask for the background and the sky, and then I've got a mask for the whole foreground. And I made these masks with just selections and the select and mask function in Photoshop. These are more hard edge masks and they're for particular zones of the image that I know I may want to isolate. So having those saved masks allows me to use them to target that adjustment even further. So I want the luminosity mask up here, but I want to completely take that adjustment out of the foreground. I didn't like it in the foreground. So I'm going to use the new My Channels button in the CX module here, the combo module, and I can use that to load my foreground as a selection. So just hold down the control or the command key and click on that, and it loads that as a selection. And now I can grab a black paintbrush and I'm going to go ahead and turn the flow and the opacity way up, go to the mask, hide the marching ants because they're just distracting. And now I can just paint. And with that selection, I can now just remove the adjustment from the whole front end of that image 
with that selection. So now I'm just darkening the back part where I wanted it. And now I'm done with that selection so I can deselect. The next thing I'm noticing is that the color that's here in the sky really isn't working for me. It's a little kind of green, yellow, I don't know. It's not the nice warm orange that that sunset was. So that might be, I wanna, you know, I wanna work with that. It's a color that I'm working towards, so maybe the Infinity Color Mask would be the right option. So I'm gonna go in and pick that color that's out there, and let's just see what that does. Yeah, that didn't quite get it. Let me open it up a little bit and bring in more whites. Yeah, what I can see there is, is that color in the sky, the mask is just way too banded. Uh, it's a more smooth transition. It's more of a tone-based transition than it is a color-based transition. So that's really not gonna work for that adjustment. But I do notice it's doing a great job of selecting the trees, which I think I wanna use that uh, for a next adjustment. I'll remember that. But for now, I'm gonna try instead of the Infinity Color Source, I'm gonna try a Zone Source to see if that will do a better job of selecting that area of the image. Let's try that. Yeah, now that's a much better mask. Now I wanna open it up a little bit so I can just use the expand button just to kind of expand that out a little bit. And uh, see, I might open up the midtones a ways too, just so I'm reaching with that adjustment further into these areas where that color was that I didn't like. And I think I'm gonna use uh, curves again, but I'm gonna use this curves to adjust color. And I'll show you how that works. So I'll go ahead and load the curves adjustment layer and there's my mask for that and now i'm going to come into the color channel start with the red and grab the targeted adjustment tool and then come out here into that light yellow color i don't like and i'm going to click and drag up to add some red to that area and then I'm gonna click down here in the shadows because I don't want my shadows to become too red. So I'm gonna click there and drag down and bring some cyan back into just the shadows, just a little bit. Okay, now I can go to the green channel and try again. This might help to remove some of that green from the sky and add in a little magenta, but I may want to keep some of that green down here in my shadows. Actually, I'm not sure, a little magenta in the shadows may not be a bad thing. And let's go to blue. Again, out here, I'm gonna click and drag to add some yellow to that color out there. And then down here in the shadows, click and drag up to add some blue into my shadows. And I think, yeah, go ahead and close that. Now with that mask, it's targeting it right where I want it. And that's a much more pleasing color than it was. And now I want these trees to really pop. So remember that infinity color mask or source was a great way to really target these trees. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on a color in these trees out here. Somewhere in there, let's see how that does. Yeah, pretty good. And if I wanna expand out the color selection to really make sure I'm getting everything and then bring up the whites to really select those trees even more. That is looking pretty good. But again, as we saw before, it's not gonna do a good job adjusting back here. And I actually don't wanna adjust. I only wanna adjust the trees. So for that, what I can do is use the mask calculator. So I want to start with this mask, but now I'm gonna say I wanna subtract. And what do I wanna subtract? Well, I wanna subtract one of my saved selections, one of these channels down here. So I'm gonna go to the My Channels source and I want to subtract out the sky and the background mask. So that's all that. So now when I hit equals, what we'll get is that infinity color range selection for the foreground and none of the background. And now I'm going to add that to a hue saturation adjustment layer. And now I can work with the hue saturation adjustment layer to add some saturation. But look, it's just going to those trees. So a little saturation, a little brightness a little more saturation, and let's check the hue. Is that the hue I want? Uh, they're pretty close to the hue I want, but I might go slightly more yellow with them. Maybe something like that, let's see. Yeah, maybe there. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's really bringing those trees out nicely. 
The next thing I want to do is darken the blues in the sky a little bit. There's a lot of ways that we could go about that, but I like to kind of do burning around the edges of my image to create a vignette or to darken certain areas. So I'm wondering if there is a good selection that I could target for that. Again, this might be a narrow zone, so I don't know, we'll try it. So I'm gonna click up here on that tone in the sky. And yeah, actually not bad. That did a pretty good job of selecting that tone. But let me work with the slider. I could, you know, just click on different zones here to jump to different tones. But I can also move even more incrementally just with the slider to really hit that zone up there that I want. And that looks pretty good. Now I want to burn. So with that mask, I can just hit the burn button here and it'll set up a burn layer and it'll load a black brush for me. And now I can just set the opacity of my brush where I want it, maybe 30%. And now use that to burn in the sky up and it's not gonna overlap into the bright parts of my sky where I don't want it to. So let's see how that's looking. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And I might also use that at a lower opacity, maybe just 10% opacity to also burn in some of these highlights in the road and just in the foreground. And now I'm gonna deselect that selection. So I was painting with that luminosity selection as a stencil, so it was guiding my burning. But now I can deselect and maybe just do a little more freehand burning just through some of these trees and whatnot in there. And then I might come back to this guy and lighten the, just the trees up uh, on that adjustment again. I don't want to overdo them, but I do want them to really pop. Now the next thing I want to do is do a little uh, light bleed or color dodging. And I want to bring even more of this warm sunlight that's kind of streaming through the atmosphere into the trees. I want to enhance that even more with some color dodging. So I want to do that with a lights mask so that my dodging goes towards the light tones and stays out of the dark tones. For this, I'm going to use the burn dodge with color mask option here as the output. So I'll go ahead and click that. And it's gonna set up the burn dodge layer with that mask. And then it's gonna allow me to select the color that I wanna work with here. And let's see, I think I wanna go with something that's more saturated than what's already there and not brighter, maybe even a little darker, but still fairly bright, fairly saturated. Let's try that. We'll see if that's gonna look okay. Now for this, I'm gonna bring my opacity up I'm gonna bring my flow down to maybe 8%. I think that'll be okay, we'll try it. And now I can start painting in some of that color. Let me see if I like the color. Um, you know, I want it to be a little orange or redder. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo back out of that. And I'm gonna come down and shift this to be a little more orange. Now let's try that. Try painting that in again. And I'm just adding color to this layer, but where the color is allowed to go is being controlled by the lights and darks in that mask. So as I'm bringing this in, um, yeah, it's coming across. I think it's looking pretty good. It takes a little while to get that all updated. Now let's see how that's looking. Okay, I like the overall effect it's going into my shadows a little too much. My mask is a little too uh, permissive. <laughs> I want the darks to be darker and maybe the lights to be a little lighter in the mask. So that's no problem because when I don't have any mask loaded as a source, I'm not working on creating a mask, the layer mask button will allow me to modify that mask that I've already made. So I'm gonna do this modification with a curves modification using the targeted adjustment tool. So I can come out here in the image. Now remember I can do mask view if I wanna see what's happening to the mask, but I actually wanna do image view. So as I adjust the mask, I can see how it's affecting the image. So I'm gonna click up here in the brights and drag those up and we can see, yep, it's bringing even more of that nice warm color into the brights. I think right about there is good. And now I can come down here into the shadows and pull that down and yep, now that's changing the mask, 
making the mass protect those shadows more so that the worms don't get out there into the shadows quite so much. So I'm going to say click OK on that. I think that looks pretty good. Uh, might be reaching into my foreground here a little much. And to back that off, all I have to do is take the eraser tool and go on that layer and then just erase some of that orange color from the foreground. Maybe something like that. Yeah. And I can get out of layer mask mode now. And I'm going to close the Go module so we can take a look and see how we did. So that's where we started. And each of those adjustments with the mask that was used with it continued to incrementally build up different adjustments. So we took it from here to there. So there you go. I hope those have been some helpful demonstrations. The TK panel has always made using Photoshop better, more powerful, and faster. And as Tony has evolved the panel over the years, he's also worked hard to make it easier to learn and more user-friendly. I think the Go module is just a huge step forward in that evolution. So thanks for tuning in and have fun with the panel. Let us know if you have any questions. All right, take care.